Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, everybody out of praise the Lord, amen. We thank God, we praise him this morning, we glorify the name of Jesus. First of all, we want to say, bring you greetings from Greater Light Ministries this morning, amen. I'm Elder Aaron Dykes, amen, along with my wife, Sister Vanessa Dykes. We thank God for being so good, we thank God. We want to open up by saying, Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers, amen. If you if you have your mother, you better cherish her, you better, amen, uh, shower her with love today, amen. It's the day that we celebrate mothers, and I thank God for my mother, amen. I thank God for my mother because she was a spiritual woman of God who believed in the name of Jesus, who done everything that she could, amen, to give to her children the things that were best. And I can thank God because I can say that I was the baby of the family and I was spoiled. And she gave me everything. So, amen. My mother, amen. She was so funny, her and my auntie, Auntie Anne. And the song I will be singing today, I will dedicate that song to them because they always wanted me to sing the song because they thought I could actually sing. I, I, I knew I was just hollering, but they actually thought I could sing. So I would always holler this song and they would have their eyes closed and they would be waving their hand and they would really be praising the God for what I was singing. But I would be just hollering and I'm going to holler that song today because I know God has been good. So if you have your mother, amen, we want to tell you to tell your mother happy Mother's Day. Amen. Wrap your arms around them. The pandemic is coming it seemed like to a conclusion so we can hug and embrace one another finally. Amen. If you got the shot, if you don't got the shot, whatever it be, amen, we still got to rely on Jesus. But this is a special service today, and I want you to know that God is in control of everything. Amen. We lift up holy hands. Amen. We give God glory for his praise. Somebody clap your hands right where you at and give God praise as we attempt to sing this song this morning. Amen. Pray for us here at Greater Light Ministry. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And though the storm winds keep on raging in my life and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day but still the hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he leads me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. And if the storms don't cease, and if those winds keep blowing, my life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. We thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And though the storm winds keep on raging in my life, and sometimes it's hard to tell the night from day. Can I get a witness out there? Hallelujah. But still the hope lies within is reassured. As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore, I know he leads me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. And if the storms don't cease, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. And if those winds keep blowing in my life, my Oh, 
I realize that sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed by those storms and those currents. They seem so fierce. Hallelujah. But in the word of God, I found, I found an anchor. And it keeps me steadfast and immovable in spite of time. And if the storms don't cease, oh, thank you, Lord. And if those winds, those winds, those winds, they just keep on blowing in my life, my My soul has been anchored. My soul has been anchored. My soul has been anchored. My soul's been anchored. My soul has been anchored. My soul has been anchored. My soul has been anchored. A pillows may break and breakers may dash, and I will not sway because He holds me fast. A soul dark today. Those clouds in the sky, I know I'm gonna make it, cause Jesus is not, but my soul's been naked, my soul has been naked, my soul has been naked, my soul has been naked, my soul's been naked, my soul has been naked, my soul has been naked, my soul has been naked, I say my soul, I say my soul, I say my soul, I say my soul. Pillows may break, breakers may dash. I will not sway because he holds me fast. So dark today, those clouds in the sky. I know I'm gonna make it cause my Jesus is not. Oh, but my soul has been naked. 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 My soul been naked. My soul's been naked. Naked. The Lord, somebody give God praise, hallelujah, my soul's been anchored in the God of my salvation, so glad, amen, that God has been good, so glad he has smiled on us, hallelujah, I feel like praise in the name of Jesus, because my soul this morning is anchored in the Lord, amen, with no further ado. We thank God for this special service, amen, and I'm going to bring someone very dear and very special to me this morning, amen, to bring forth the message of the day, amen, and that's my beautiful wife of 32 years, Sister Vanessa Dykus, amen. We ask God to touch her, anoint her, give her the words to give to you from Greater Light Ministry. Let's receive her by saying amen and thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I'm so thankful to be here one more day, just one more day in the land of the living. And this is not my element. Uh, my uh, husband asked me to do this the other day. And I was like, okay, I'm going to try. I'll try. I've been teaching for a long time in, in different areas as far as young people, children, young adults, Sunday school class, missing all of it. I miss classroom number two where we would teach together with a teaching team at our former church. And um, so I've been kind of out of my element. I'm not a preacher, I'm not an evangelist. I am Sister Vanessa Dykes, that's who I am. I'm happy to be that person, not trying to be more, not trying to be less, but trying with all of my might to be pleasing unto the Lord. First, I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. I want to thank God for my mother. My mother passed away when I was a young person. And I just, I'm so thankful to be Eula Mae's daughter. I'm so thankful that she birthed me 
And I'm so glad that for the example, for the short time that we had, she showed me the example of a godly woman. She was saved, she was sanctified, and I have vivid pictures of the day that she passed away. I was um, at school and I was running home, I said. I knew she wasn't feeling good when we left. So I was running across the field. I had made her some uh, artwork and I was running, 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 trying to get my mother this artwork because I knew I felt like if I could get this artwork to her, she would feel better, she would feel better. But as God had it, 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 it did make her feel better. And when I got there, she was already gone. And from that moment on, my life has been different. I've, I've had a lot of people in my life. I've had a lot of love in my life. But one thing about a mother, you get one mother. You get, you get one mother, one, one mother, one mother. So the title that I will use for this, this lesson for today is the daughter of a motherless child. Sometimes we walk through our lives and we go and we do this and we do that and, and we just don't have a sense of belonging. And this is true to people that have a mother that's alive. This is true to people that have a mother that's deceased. You can have a mother walking up and down the street right now. You still like, feel like a motherless child. But what I come to you today, I come to you today to tell you, God has a plan and God has a purpose in your life. When my mother deceased, it was 10 children that needed to be raised. There was 10 of us that was all underage. So our whole family split up. We split up in different places. And from that day to this one, we've never all been back together. We've lost siblings. We've gotten together for some, some occasions and this and that. So when we left, we left, I left all of my cousins, all of my aunties and uncles in different places. We were born in Arkansas, so we, we moved to California. Thank God for my sister Ursuline who took my younger sister and myself in and she took care of us. She raised us in the ad admonition of the Lord. And I'm so grateful, I'm so grateful for even after not having a mother, he landed me somewhere where I could be mothered. He landed me somewhere where I could be mothered even without a mother. And I'm telling you today, no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're experiencing, some day, this day is a day of joy for some people this day is a day of sadness for some people. This day is a day of, of all type of emotions. Some people say they wish they could take it off the, off the calendar. It's, it's, it's joy and it's sadness. But I am so grateful. I don't bring you a sad message today. I don't bring you a, a message where you can go and get in your bed and cuddle up and cry. I bring you a message today that no matter where you are, no matter what life has given you, there is a God of hope in your situation. There is a God of love in your situation. He will plant you. He will root you. He will ground you. He will give you someone to help you through this life. Again, back to my sister, Ursie. She took us from, California, from Arkansas to California. We came here in a, in a camper. And, and during the time when we were driving here, we were driving with my uncle. And we got lost. We was in this camper. We got lost. And we were looking on the, stopped at a gas station. And it was this guy. He said, just follow me. Just follow me. So all through the time, we were following him to California in this camper, trying to get to California. And I'm so thankful that the man led us right. And the only thing I can remember was looking up and seeing the bright lights of California. I had never seen so many lights. But I knew at that time, it was a calmness in my spirit. There was a calmness. I said, well, I'm going to get to my sister's house. I had a plan. I always usually try to plan stuff, even as a child. I have it in my mind. I may not come out right, but I usually try to plan stuff. In my mind, I say, you know, I'm going to get in my sister's house, and I'm not going to cause no trouble. I'm going to iron my own clothes. I'm going to wash my own stuff. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this. That was a plan, but it didn't quite work out like that. I was a lot of trouble. I got in trouble in school, but one thing about me, I didn't bother nobody that didn't bother me. If they didn't bother me, you didn't have no problem with me. That's been since I was a child. But if you bothered me, there was something going to happen. And I had the Holy Ghost. The Lord saved me 45 years ago. Hallelujah. 45 years ago, Amen. I landed in Emmanuel Temple, Greater Emmanuel Temple in Linwood, California. And the Lord took me to the upper room. The, my motivation and said, well, if you get baptized in Jesus' name and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you can see your mother again because my mother was saved. And I said, okay, I'm going to go get baptized in Jesus' name and I'm going to see my mother. Little did I know I couldn't see her the next day. 
But I have to live this life. Mother Stewart took me to the upper room. And the Holy Ghost flooded my soul 45 years ago. The most important thing that I can tell you today, I have two scriptures. This is the most important thing that I'm going to say the whole day. Acts 2.38, then Peter said, repent, unto, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the most important thing. Without the Holy Ghost, my statistics would have came true. Without a mother, without a father. By the way, it was said that my father was the one who killed my mother. So on that day, I lost my mother and my father on the same day. Because then the rumor went all around, and I got a book from my sister the other day. And it was talking, filling in some blanks about some of the things that happened during my mother's lifetime. And I am so grateful that I looked at this scripture I repented of my sins. I got baptized in Jesus' name. I received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, and it was in the upper room. I'm so grateful for the mothers and the women that the Lord placed in my life. The next, next scripture I want to say, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I want you to know we can have a lot of stuff. Yes. We can have a lot of things. I have not. I have lived a life to where I have had everything pretty much that I wanted. If I wanted a new dress, I go buy a new dress. If I wanted a whatever, I wanted some more ice cream, I go get me some ice cream. Because the Lord blessed me, not because of the things, it's because of His goodness and His mercy yes. that we are not consumed. I'm gonna bring to witness some people today just in case you think that your life may not be what you want it to be yeah. we have some examples that were written in the word of God that teaches us and the first one I would like to bring to mind is Jabez there was a little guy in the, in the Bible his name was Jabez and there was so many so small amount of things that was said about him that you, if you were reading, you could just look over it pretty quickly. Uh -huh. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 9. 1st Chronicles, did I say Corinthians? It's 1st Chronicles chapter 4, yes. verse 9. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because... I bear him in sorrow. Mm -hmm. And I want to stop right there. Anytime you're born in sorrow, you may not have a really, really good mother at that time. Mm -hmm. Because anything that's birthed in sorrow, it may not be treated so fairly. It may not be treated so, so, so right. It may not have got the little cradling that the baby needs. He may not have got the bottle on time because... The, in his eye, he represented sorrow. He represented something that was painful. He represented something that she wished, any, no one wants sorrow to come upon them. So when you look at this little baby named Jabez, you're looking at something that's caused you pain. And usually the average thing that if something caused you pain, you want to get rid of it. You want to not be bothered with it. But Jabez, he appealed. He made an appeal. Verse number 10 says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, and that, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me, and the Lord granted him that which he requested. Even in born in sorrow, even in a day of sorrow, even in a day of not having the love and the care that you feel like you need, and we all need love, there is an appeals process. You can appeal to the blood. He said, oh, a lot of people say this prayer, and they say, oh, that you would enlarge my territory. One of the things in the verse is not only talk about enlarging our territories, 
It talks about not causing pain to others. Come on now. It's, it talks about not causing pain to others. Lord, bless me that I don't cause pain to other people. All right. Bless me so that the evil around me, that I don't partake in it. I know I was born in sorrow, but Lord, please help me. Yes. Help me, Lord. And so Jabez appealed, and I'm telling you today, you can appeal. You can appeal to the God of your creation yes. that he will help you in the time of trouble. The topic for today says, who is my mother? Who is my mother? The subtopic is the voice of a motherless daughter purchased by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The voice of a motherless daughter purchased by the blood of Jesus. Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid of the terror, terrified because of them, for the Lord goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So I'm gonna say that again. During this pandemic, during the time of my loneliness, feeling like I don't have a mother or a father, feeling like I don't have a church, feeling like I don't have no brothers, feeling like I don't have no sisters, who is my mother? Who is my father? The Lord would give me all these scriptures. One scripture he gave me seemed like every day, I will never leave you nor forsake you. From a chap, from the voice of someone that has a, a mother, the, the scripture says, not if my mother leave me or if my father forsake me. It says when. Man. That's the first time it stuck out. It said when. when. There's going to be some times that our mothers and our fathers don't do right. There's going to be some mothers and some fathers that don't do by their children the whole time that they're alive. There's going to be some times when our mothers and our fathers, at their best effort, may not do everything we think that we need done. But the Bible says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. My song, it says, when you walk by the way, I will lead you. On the fatness of the land, I will feed you. The mansion in the sky, I will deed you. And all those high places, I'll bring them down. The scripture, the, there's an I in my situation. Matthew 12, 46 through 50. While Jesus was talking to the crowd, his mother and brother stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and your brother are standing outside wanting to speak to you. He replied to them. He says, who is my mother? Who is? And who is my brother? Mm -hmm. Pointing to the disciples, he said, here, here, right here. Here is my brother. Here is my mother. He says, for whosoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and my sister. That's why we call each other brothers and sisters. It's right here. He said, but Jesus said, when you ask questions, we want people to answer us, but the best place to get the answer from is the man. Yeah, right. And Jesus is the man. He said, well, I'm going to tell you, you got the question? We have questions. You got the question? Who is my mother? Who is my father? I'm going to tell you who your mother is. I'm going to tell you who your father is. Motherless child, motherless daughter, when you don't find no way. He who does the will of God. Why is he that does the will of God my mother and my father? Because if my brother and my sister and my mother is doing the will of God, ho, oh, we'll go back to Jabez because they not going to bring me no harm. It ain't no harm coming to you from your brothers and your sisters. He said, where did I get my wounds from? I got my wounds from the house. Where did I get all these scars that you don't see? Where did I get my tears from? Where did I get my pain from? Right in the house of the Lord. But this pain ain't for your demise. It's not for your to you to shut down and, and run away and hide. This thing is going to sharpen you. This thing is going to strengthen you. In my weakness, I am made strong. When I'm in pain, do you know that the most of the songs that we sing today, they were birthed through people that have pain? Do you know that we sing in songs that people, oh, oh, my soul loves you. This was done in pain and agony. So today, 
I want to tell all the people that has caused me pain. I want to tell you thank you. Hallelujah. I want to tell you. I came today to tell you thank you. Guess what? This pain that, I, that, that I'm feeling, and I'm feeling it every day. I came to tell you it's a gift. We had a concert one time at the church, and it was called The Gift. And in that concert, there were some things that happened that I just, I just was, was taken back. I'll just say that. But in that, in that concert called The Gift, I got a gift. The pain that I felt caused me to do better. I'm a better decorator. I'm a better singer. I'm a better shouter. I'm a better praiser. Simply because of the pain that was caused. Don't worry about the pain. The pain is going to come. The other person I want to bring to mind is Job. Job was sitting down in one of the scriptures. He lost everything. This was a man who walked up right before God. He did the things and he hated evil. That's what the Bible says about brother Job. But Job was sitting when all the calamities lost everything that he had and then couldn't figure out why. Sitting in a place of confusion, sitting in a place of pain and turmoil. He said this in Job chapter 17, verse 14. If I say to corruption, you are my father mm -hmm. and the worm, my mother and my sister. He was so low, he was down there talking to the ground. You know, like this worm right here, you my mother. You know, I'm like, who is my mother? You my mother. This corruption, you must be my mother. I did everything I was supposed to do. I walked all right. I served faithfully as I could. I served as best as I could. I was a good man. I prayed in the Lord. He said, well, have you considered my servant Job? And I'm like, well, Lord, why would you do that? Have you considered my servant Job? Molly, have you considered my servant Ibn? Have you considered my servant Dykes? Why? The pain that Job experienced in his life was set for our, our example. That no matter what, whether you lose houses, whether you lose land, whether you lose children, whether you lose wife, the pain that you have, God has a better place for you. Don't worry about the pain. The pain's gonna lift you up. The Bible says when Job's testing was done, his his ladder was greater than his first. Don't worry about the problem. We're gonna have problems. Job sat in fear and confusion, misplacement, hurt, loss, mistrust, lying and deceitful tongues in the ear of him daily, rejection. Mental illness, loneliness, wandering. But there is a problem solver. Yes. There is a problem. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Not if, but when. Man. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. you women of children and women without children. That would be me. I don't have any children. I have not birthed any children. And every time when I go to church or go somewhere, they, somebody said, well, happy Mother's Day. Oh, never mind. You're not no mother. And I'm like, well, didn't I know that when I got here? <laughs> but can I still have a happy day? Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away. Don't worry about whether you have children, whether you don't have children. Whether your children are in your life, whether your children are out of your life, whether they do what they're supposed to do, whether they don't do what they're supposed to do. You have a God that loves you and he cares for you on this Mother's Day. This day is sad for a lot of people and I recognize that. I'm praying for you, Sister Gardner, in the loss of your son. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for that the Lord, only God can comfort you when you lose your children. Only God can comfort you or make you okay when you don't have children. That would be me. I am so grateful that the Lord knows what you need. I don't have children that I birth, but he gives you reasons. He gives you seasons of things that will enhance your life and bless your life. And when I was, re when I was reading and studying and trying to prepare something for today, I read Psalms 113, verse 9. It says, he settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. 
he settles the childless woman in her home. This is my home. This is a home ministry. We're not trying to be more. We're not trying to do less. We're taking what we have and we're using it for the glory of God. Hallelujah. I'll give myself an amen. Amen. We're giving, taking what we have. We've been locked out of our church. They changed the locks on our church, so we opened up our own church. That's what happens. You want to know what happened? He shouldn't have gave me the mic, so that's what I got the mic, so I'm going to just say that. Anyway, he settles the motherless child. Thank you, Lord, for settling me where I am. I remember when I started my daycare a long time ago, I remember I would just put names out of the air. I said, hey, Jose. Hey, Juanita. Hey, Sam. Hey, I was just calling. I didn't have but two kids. And I was just, Aaron, Aaron was laughing at me. He's like, I'm like, he's like, what are you talking about? I was calling those things as though they were as they are. And today I was just thinking, I said, for the motherless child, Lord, I want to thank you for Joseph, Imani, Aiden, Amir, Armani, Anaya, Anaya, Micah, and Jeremiah. And then I said, well, thank you, Lord, for Samuel, Madeline, Willie, Tamara, Aaron, Aaron, Bryson, Malik, Devin, and Shania. And then I looked, I said, well, Lord, I was looking at pictures. Lord, thank you for Eden and Evan and Amara and Kayla, Kayla and Noah, Noah and Jayla and Jahina. And I thank you for Amber and Garrison. I thank you for Kai, Jade and Jordan, Jace, Kaylee, Kaylee, Adrian, Alexander, Dylan and Faith. I thank you for Oscar, my other Kaylee, my Jackson, my EJ, EJ, my Ethan, my Alyssa, my Savannah, my Billion and my Xavier, just to name a few. I want to thank you, Lord, for the motherless child that he gave me some children that I could wake up at 5.30 in the morning, I can make them some breakfast, I can comb their hair, I can cook them, I can. I have one kid come in and say, auntie, auntie, I haven't eaten for a week. I'm like, boy, stop, stop saying that. I said, the crumbs are still on your mouth right now. Are them crumbs for a week? He, he was saying he was enjoying the, the uh, aromatherapy therapy that was coming from the kitchen. Thank you, Lord. He was uh, enjoying the smell of them good old waffles with the cinnamon on it and, and the bacon. He was. He said, "Oh, I just right really want to eat." I'm so thankful for being. I didn't start my daycare to uh, fulfill a void of children. I never had a void of children. You, I'm an acceptance of. A, I'm a type of a woman that accepts what what the Lord gives me. If you give me this, this I accept. You have a motherless child. If you really want to be progressive, you accept. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you, you don't have a mother? Okay, I accept that. You can't have children? I accept that. Thank you, Lord. I, I, I refuse to live my life in what I can't have All right. and what I don't have See and what the Lord didn't allow me to have. I choose to live my life to be appreciative of what I do have. Yeah. And the Lord, one reason why I do that is because the Bible says and he said he would not withhold nope. any good thing from you Word. if you walk upright before me. I've been walking upright before him for a long time. I've been striving for a long time. I got to say 45 years ago. No, I haven't done everything that was right. No, I have not served God with my whole heart and my whole mind. But I've been striving for 45 years. When I would do wrong, I would be in a place of repentance, asking God to help me because I believe the gospel that Bishop Carl W. Stewart taught me. I believe the gospel that Dr. Janet Marie lived by. I've, I don't have a mother that birthed me, but I had some women in my life that have shown me the path of righteousness, and I believe that. So I'm so thankful that the Lord, even being a motherless child, you can not be without a mother. Because he said, you, if you're doing the will of God, you can be my mother. Let me get this straight. Let me tell you, fix this. Because you are my mother and the Lord gave you to me, you have a responsibility, mothers of the church, mothers of the world, mothers around town that's gathering all the things that's going on. You have a responsibility to the daughters that the Lord has given you. That's right. You have a reason. When you and a mother authoritative figure, we're looking for you. We're looking for you to make a right decision. We're looking to you to speak up for us, mother. We want the mother title. We don't want to do what we're supposed to do as mothers. When as a mother, when when she was she's a corrector, she gets things in order. 
when the kids are acting up, use your voice, mother. He gave you a voice. They're not going to receive it, but you do have a voice. You do have a voice to speak up for your children, and you're going to be held accountable. Yeah. I'm letting you know that the things that we're doing or not doing, we are going to be held accountable for it. The pain that Jabez said, he said, I don't want, Lord, help me. I'm not asking for riches. I'm not asking for fame. I'm not even asking for the acceptance of the people. I'm asking you that wherever I go, don't let me cause pain to other people. Don't let me hurt people. Enlarge my territory. Enlarge my space so that I can be a blessing to someone. I know I was born in sorrow. I know I didn't have a good fighting chance, but bless me. And, and the Lord granted him his request. So what I would like to say to you that have gifts and talents and abilities that you have taken and you have wrapped them in a napkin, you know, wrapped them and you buried them and you've done it for whatever reason. I would like to encourage you today, go get your gift. Go dig it up, go take it out of that napkin Stop acting like we don't have, we ain't never been taught nothing. Stop being mean to people. Stop doing all that stuff and go get your gift. Don't worry about somebody else's gift. I admonish you today to go get your gift that the Lord has given you. Pray over and ask God to bless it. He will, if you do it in sincerity. Some of you guys have ministries that you have that you've been waiting for somebody to call you to the mic. Nobody have to call you to the mic. No, you don't need a mic to use your gift. There's a whole world out here, motherless children, children without brothers and sisters that you can embrace, with children without people. We're walking around here like you lost. We lost our pastor. Yes, we lost our pastor. But guess what? Jesus is alive. Yes. Jesus is alive and he is well. Our pastor was our pastor. And I said some. I was thinking the other day, I said, people that don't know our pastor, they may think, well, these people are crazy. He was just a man. Why do they keep talking about, get over? It is, it's no such thing as getting over Pastor Howard A. Swanson. Yes. It's, 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 I, he is etched in our core yes. simply because, not because of him being a man, because of what he taught yes. and because of what he lived. I would admonish the minister, if you take on the word of God, what we saw was him take the word of God and we taught, saw him live it. Yeah. We saw him teach it and we saw him live it. No, he's not our God. No, we don't serve Pastor Swansea. We love Pastor Swansea and anybody that know me know I love my pastor. The reason why you can know that I love my pastor is because of what I, the fruit. Look at the fruit. The fruit is all on the ground. The fruit is everywhere. Every chance I would get, I would serve at Peace Episode. My husband and myself, we walked in that door in 19, I believe, 95, and we never left. When we left our former church, we walked into Peace Episode. We were looking for somewhere to land safely. We left our other church for whatever reason. That's nothing to do with other people. Whatever people say, that's their thing. I don't have a problem with what people think. What would the world be without people thinking and saying stuff? But we walked in the Peace Apostolic Church and we said we were going to go and we were going to look around town. We're going to search for a place. Uh -huh. We were looking. We walked in there and we never left. Yes. We never left. We anchored. We, we, yes. we, hit, we, we hitched down. Yes. And we started serving. Glory. We started serving. Glory. Glory. And I remember this, this necklace right here I'm wearing. My former first lady gave me this necklace, Sister Cynthia Swanson. She put it to the side and she said, Vanessa, I want you to have this. And I treasure it because she thought enough of me to tell me, she called, she called me over one day and she said, you know, I'm so glad you're here. I got something for you to do. And she put me to work from, right, from then on, from, the, from that moment on, from project to project to project to project. And I loved every minute of it. The reason why I loved every minute of it was because I know I have gifts. And I know I want to use them in the house of the Lord. So it never was a problem. But I just, I know, ugh, I know with the gifts there comes pain. I know with your gifts there comes agony. I know there's with your gift there comes rejection. I received that. And I learned it in the house of God.
I just have to give you all credit for that. I learned it right in the churches. I learned how to treat people, and I learned how not to treat people. I learned how to serve, and I learned how not to serve. I am so grateful. You ministers and deacons wise that I was leading for probably almost, I don't know, 25 years. I'm thankful that you all taught me. You taught me how to serve. Every flower, every, every, every act of kindness you, was teaching me how to serve. Yes. Every time when my husband was doing song service and leading, sitting over in the corner with his bongos doing the best he can, even when he came in there one Sunday and somebody done moved him in the back room, we had to go get him, but we got him. <laughs> we got him back put in place because he, had a, he wanted to serve in the house of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Even through the pain. I, I want you to know, get your gift, use your gift, yes, Lord. accept the pain, and grow from it. Yes. The only way you can grow from the pain, we have to forgive. Yes. That's the key ingredient to grow from your pain is to forgive. You're going to have to forgive your mother. If she's hurt you, you're going to have to forgive her. That's not up to her to do. The Bible says when you go to the altar and you bring your gift, and if you know your brother got an all against, she said, leave the gift. Leave it there. Go back to your brother. You go get it right. Yeah. Some of y'all, the problems that we're facing right now is because you never did what the scripture said. Come on now. You never, ha, glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. You never did what the scripture said. And you walked up there, you got that mic, and you said all the good things and you preached, and you never did the scripture. <laughs> I want you to have the mic if you want the mic. But do what the Bible says. It's going to come a time when the church has to do what the words say. Yes. Not just holding on to I got my Bible. I got my tambourine. It will come a time, motherless children, <clears throat> motherless boys and motherless girls, where the, the Lord Jesus said, you my mother, and you my father, and you my brother, you my sister. Sisters and brothers, it's time to do right. Hallelujah. And it's time to forgive. We're facing stuff right now. Because people have not forgiven. They used to talk about it at our old church. They said, old peace, old peace, old peace. New peace is dealing with old peace's mess. Somebody say, amen. I'm going to give myself an offering for that. New peace is dealing with old peace's unforgiveness and unsettling of things that happened way back when. And we've been holding grudges. And I'm here, I'm, I'm never, I don't get in people's stuff. I don't get in people's business. But right now we got some things we need to work out. On this Mother's Day, I grant you, my first lady, the one that gave me this necklace when she passed, the day she passed away, I was in my house, this house right here, probably almost in the same spot, preparing a Mother's Day bouquet for her. I was preparing for her when I got the call. I got the call from Sister Crane, she, and I thank her. And I, I know... The response was, I, could, I just couldn't stop screaming. I dropped everything and I couldn't stop screaming because we lost her on Mother's Day. In the, in, we lost her on Mother's Day. When I got the call from Brother Lamar Price from New York about my pastor, I, could, I called him. I said, you're not telling the truth. Pastor was sick today. He's not dead. He was sick today. From the time we got the message, for hours we call, nobody answered. Mind you, during the pandemic, I would get all kind of calls. Somebody sick, somebody send this, do that, do that. But when my pastor called, we couldn't get a call. We couldn't get an answer, just to verify that he passed away. So when I, we talk about, I'm going back and forth because this is the agony that I, we're feeling. And I, my husband may not never give me the mic again, but I'm a, I got it now, so I'm gonna use it. I'm using it now because that's he gave it to me. But the days following, the agony, the pain that we felt after verifying that our beloved pastor had passed away has been so, 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 so real. Yes. It's been so real. Yes. From the night he passed away yes. to the service that we wasn't invited to, yes. to not seeing the chariots marching down Carson Avenue to carry a, such a great man such as this. Yes. I've seen great things done for great people, but I, was, I felt cheated. I have to say that. I just have to say it real loud. I, I felt cheated. I felt cheated 
when my pastor wasn't marched down the aisle for the world to see what a great man. But in my cheating, I still have to go back and think. Pastor always preached. He said, you, your, your life ain't worth nothing. He's like, $5 is a chain. He would give us some things. He's like, you don't, you don't know where you're going to be buried. You don't know if people are going to remember you. We don't know. You don't know what the problem is. It's not that the chariots didn't come. It's not that we didn't have a fanfare. It's not that we didn't have a program. It's not that we looked at the screen and saw everybody talking about our pastor but us. It's not all of that. It's the, when you lose someone, you have to properly grieve. You have to be properly have an acknowledgement that you've lost them. And you have to have a proper grievement, bereavement process. We will be bereaving a long time because he impacted our lives. I'm saying that to say, even though you feel like a motherless child, a fatherless child, you still have hope. Yeah. You have a future. You have gifts. You have talents. You have abilities. Don't let the devil take them. Yeah. And don't use all of your time trying to get them. Yes. We don't have time to get them. That's right. There's too many souls that need to be saved. There's too many people grieving. There's too many people that need service. The same services we were doing inside of the building. The pandemic said you can't go into the building. Hello, go get your gift and take it out of the building. You may not ever get back to that building or any building the way that it was. Because even when we get back, people act like they're scared of you. They running around. Oh, don't touch me. Oh, don't touch me. But when it's in the in the grocery store, they touching the bread. Don't you know people touch that bread? They touching the meat. Don't you know people touch that meat? You got a mask on your face, but you don't have no mask on that meat. You don't have no mask on all that stuff you got in that cart. People, this is a trick of the devil. When the Bible tells us to gather in this world, say don't gather. He told us to embrace, and they said you gonna you you don't don't touch me. He said touch me, handle me. You don't have to be afraid of dying from Corona virus. People, when you're time to go, you will not miss that appointment. Thank you, Lord. There are some appointments that we miss. We may miss the dentist's appointment. We may miss the doctor's appointment. But your time of death, you will not miss that appointment. So don't sit up all crowded up. I can't live. I can't do this because I'm going to die. I'm going to die. You ain't going to die till it's time for you to die. Don't worry about it. Live your life. Be cautious. I'm not saying don't be cautious. I'm not saying don't follow CDC guidelines. But I'm saying stop tripping. Quit acting like you don't know what to do to open the building. When I, we sit around all over the place in all buildings all over the whole wide world open. I sit at the gas station and look at the church across the street with tents and people everywhere and distance and you can sit in church. I went to one church that had 10 or 15 tents out there and only one or two people in it. But they made preparation for the people. We prepare stuff for people all over the world. We prepare things for and we came and, and that's what I said with we 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 what I said in the pandemic, I said I wish and for some point the saints say we're tired of church. And we don't want to go to church today. We want to break. I wish they would just say it out loud. Once you say stuff out loud, you're not that scared of this pandemic because what the reason why I know some of us are really, really terrified, but some of us ain't that scared. Because I see you all over everywhere. I see you all over everywhere. But except the church. Oh, I ain't going back to church. Where are you going to get your help from? Yep, Where are you going to use the toolboxes tools that the pastor gave you in your toolbox. Where are you going to use the script? We need to be rubbing arms together. We need to be in, the, in somewhere collectively rejoicing and giving the God the glory. If they say we can't go in the building, go get you a parking lot. Go get you a park. Go get you a voice. Just holler out Jesus because he is worthy to be praised. They took it, but you don't have to let them keep it. Thank you, Lord. I'm telling you today as your mother the starter and I don't have any children, and I'm grateful for everything that the Lord has given to me. I'm telling you, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, go get your gift. Go get your gift and use it for the glory of God. The scripture that I would like to bring, it says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, 
abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. They who? Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? They who? Shall distress? They who? Shall persecution, famine, or nakedness, or pearl war? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep at, for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, everything through the pain, through the rejection, through the lies, through the cheating, through the, the manipulation, through the lawsuit. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Don't worry about the stuff, y'all. I would love to see under the ministries that we've been a part of, that 10 to 20 ministries be birthed from that. I would love to see that. I would love to see you go get your gift. I would love to see you go get it and use it for the glory of God. I'd like to thank all the mothers that's in my life, all the women that's in my life to help me. I need help. Thank you. I need help to be the person that I need to be. Mothers, you have a responsibility. If you haven't done your responsibility, you need to start doing it. Children, we have a responsibility to do right by our mothers. If you haven't seen your mother today, go see her. Thank you. If you possibly can see her, see her. If you can't see her, call her. And take her a card. Take her a gift. Do something nice. Forgive her. If she wasn't everything you wanted her to be, forgive her. Because she had to forgive you. And more importantly, God had to forgive us. From our sin, everything we've done, he'd have to forgive us. They who? Who are you going to let separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus? It don't matter what people are doing or what they're not doing. All we want out of this whole package, we want the truth. Thank you, Lord. If, if, if you can't give me nothing else, give us the downright naked truth. Give us the truth. When you tell people the truth, they respect you more, and they can follow you more, and they can even forgive you if you just tell the truth. And that's for everybody. Your parents, they'll respect you if you tell them the truth. Husbands, tell your wife the truth. Wives, tell your husband the truth. Children, tell your parents the truth. The truth is the only thing that's going to set us free. The conclusion of this lesson for today Thank you, is found in St. John chapter 14, verse 27. It says, my peace I leave with you. Hallelujah. I do not give you to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. May the peace I leave with you comfort you, motherless child. I turn you back into the hands of my husband. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Somebody give God praise. Yes. He's worthy of all of the praise, of all of the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the messenger. We thank you for the message. We thank you for the words of encouragement. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Dykus. Pouring out your heart. God sees our pain. He knows our pain. He knows our struggles. He knows what we need. And he will supply every need. We thank you for joining us at Greater Life Ministry this morning. On this special Mother's Day. That's all of our time. Thank you for your time. If you're out there and you haven't received the gift of the Holy Ghost, 
If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, God have not filled you with the Holy Ghost. If you have not spoken other tongues, today is your day. You may not believe it. You may not know how to receive it. But the Bible says that they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call on the name of Jesus, who is up high, looks down low, and is able to save. Ah, glory. He's there to save you today. All you have to do is call him. I want to give, offer this little prayer before I leave. Because God has smiled on us. Yes, he has. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We ask you for everyone who's been in attendance today to touch their heart in a special way. Move as only you can. We ask you, God, to remove the pain and help us through our sorrows, through our afflictions, through our heartaches. God, help us to be better. Most of all, take away anything that's not like you, God. Any sin, anything that's not like you. Take it out of our life that we may be pleasing in that eyesight. We love you, God. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be accepted in thy sight. And we will, as the people of God, give you all praise, glory, and honor. And everyone said, in Jesus' name, I wish somebody would clap those hands. Take us to the King. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank